Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today I thought I was going to make a video, a multi-part video about reviving the IBM VNet uh, international or global network and I had, in fact, I have already made one video about that and uh, I was going to go and explain how we set it up, how it's working and show it in uh, show it in its full glory as as I'm using it together with uh, with another person on another continent but then as I just was finishing this that video I got a, a video submission again from Prof Professor René Ferland in Montreal Canada with a video on how to make uh, use of DOS VS to compile stuff and get stuff going and, and kind of more in-depth uh, kind of like the videos that I make about the usage of, of MBS 3.8. So I couldn't pass up on the opportunity and since Professor René Ferland's videos is, a, is part of a his video is part of a, a three-part video, um, I thought I put my VNet revival or as I call it as you see here HNet revival video aside until we publish all three parts of uh, Professor René Fernand's video out of respect for, for René and the, and the wonderful videos he's been making for this channel. So uh, we're gonna see in this video how René makes full use of DOSVS of course uh, very often out of uh, uh, running DOSVS under VM 370 so because that will give you an uh, interactive environment to work with because remember DOSVS is a batch pure batch only operating system doesn't have any use of uh, monitors or uh, our 3270 sessions whatsoever so if you want to if you want to be interactive and work with DOSVS in a in an interactive way kind of like with uh, TSO on the MVS or ZOS you make usually a use of VM370 for that and run DOSVS on the VM370. So in this part multi in the three part series Rene is going to show us how to get advanced uh, stuff done with DOSVS and how to program and how to compile stuff in multiple uh, compilers. Over to you Rene. Hi everyone this is Rene from Montreal and today I would like to make a video about working on DOSVS. Now, in the past, I made a plea for DOSVS, telling you to give it a chance. And I thought that if I could give you a sample of what I did personally on DOSVS, maybe this way you would get a taste of what it is, hopefully get interested in doing your own stuff on DOSVS, and possibly learn a few tricks along the way. So what is it I want to show you? I want to show you how to create a private library of Fortran subroutines object modules and then after that how to compile, link it in, and run a Fortran program that's going to call one of the subroutines of this library. Okay. So that's what I want to do. It might seem seems a little bit uh, simple, but uh, I would like to remind you that I never worked on DOSVS ever in my life before starting to play with it when I discovered Hercules. So doing that kind of thing, I had absolutely no idea how to do it at the time when I started. So it's only after I succeeded and doing that kind of stuff that I started to understand, I guess, a little bit better DOSVS and I was able to make it uh, do whatever I wanted to do for me. Okay, so let's go for it. <clears throat> all right, so what do we have here? First of all, this window, we have the VM 6-pack 1-2, the VM 376 pack 1-2 running. And these... Uh, <clears throat> window here I have the DOSVS 5 pack up and running ready to work for me and before I go on submitting jobs and doing what I want to show you I want to tell you something regarding this uh, system I changed the directory entry we have to do that I showed you I guess uh, <coughs> 
that kind of stuff when I discuss about the PL1 and the COBOL compiler. So I change, of course, the, uh, the size of the virtual storage. I removed the virtual equal real, I added this uh, mini disk, but the most importantly, I replaced the dedicate statements for the DASDs by end disk statements like this. And I did that because I want to be able to link those uh, DASDs from the CMS user virtual machine. And I can't do it if the DASDs are dedicated precisely because they are dedicated. You cannot <coughs> link another virtual machine. You cannot link the DASD to another virtual machine because they are dedicated. So I changed this and this way I'm going to be able to link those uh, DASDs and it's going to be useful for what I want to do. Okay, so let's quit uh, this, uh, this thing. This is main, so I'm going to quit <coughs> the editor. Log off from Maint and log on to CMS user. CMS user. Now, what do I have here? I prepared three Fulcrum program essentially. There are, the first two are actually subroutines. These are the subroutines of my library. And this is the uh, <coughs> program that's going to call one of these two, actually the Tali uh, subroutine here. Now, these two subroutines are in fact part of a larger package of subroutines called SSP, the Scientific Subroutine Package. It's a very old package that was designed in the 60s, I, I believe. And I used that package when I was a student uh, at the university. Now I guess it's obsolete, but it was fun for me to find it on the internet and install it on the USBS. So what I'm going to do is create a library and store the object module of these two, uh, two guys here and later I'm going to run, uh, compile, link at it and run the Tally P program here that's going to call the Tally or Tally, I don't know, Tally I guess, <coughs> subroutine over there. Okay, so that's what I want to do. All right, so because I'm going to submit a lot of jobs to DOSVS from my CMS virtual machine, I'm going to write myself a small exec to ease my task of submitting a job. Okay, so let me do it right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to call this exec uh, SUB DAS, submit to DAS. <clears throat> What's in there? Uh, First of all, a control statement off, no message, to make the whole thing silent. Then I'm gonna spool the punch to the OSVS. CP spool punch to the OSVS. Then I'm gonna punch the job. The name of the job will be an argument to my exec, so argument one. The file type for my jobs will be DOSVS, that's going to be the way to recognize a file containing a job for DOSVS. The DOS, sorry, DOSVS, whatever file type it is. And I have to punch without a header, remember. Okay, and when the punch is done, I'm going to put the, the virtual punch back to its state. So CP spool punch off and maybe an exit, although it's not really necessary. But no. So here it is. Now this is a small exec that's going to take one argument, the name of my job, and send it to my DOSVS virtual machine. All right, so now <clears throat> I want to create the library. Now to make a comparison, if I am on MVS, probably what I would do is store the modules in a partition data set, so I would have to allocate first this data set, and then after that the catalog procedure for compiling would allow me to store the modules in this uh, partition data set. But on DOSVS things are slightly different. First of all, there are no partition data sets as such, but there is an equivalent called a library, and a library has to be created by a special program called CoreGZ, C-O-R-G-Z. Okay. 
So we're going to use that program to create our library. Where can you find information about this uh, core GZ program? In this manual, uh, System Control Statements. If you go, let me check, <coughs> page 110, over there. <coughs> you can see the description of the Core GZ program. Uh, Core GZ is used, uh, I believe it says here, in this section, the control statement can be submitted to copy program. So that's a program to create and do all kinds of stuff with libraries on the USVS. So we're going to use it to create our library. So let's go right away to proceed. So I will create a file containing a job. So let's call it uh, deflib, define a library, the USVS. The first thing we have to do is provide power with the job entry control language uh, statements for the job. So remember, we have to give a job card, a list card, and an end of job card, typically. So I'm going to do that. Um, okay, input, yes, all right. So the job card, like this. Job name, deflib. I'm going to run this job in the background partition, the BG partition, that's class zero. And I'm going to dispose or delete this job when it is uh, executed or done. I'm not going to keep it in the reader queue, so this position will D. After that, I have to give the list a card, so LST. First, I have to give the class of output. Now, remember, if you want something to be printed, you have to make sure that all the classes matches. So here on uh, VM370, uh, you can see that, wait a minute, uh, one, two, three. okay, you can see that over here, there is a printer in class A, that's good. Over here, if I do CP query UR, I can see that I have a printer, the virtual printer of the virtual machine is in class A2, that's fine. And the task here, I have a list task in class A2. So if I choose the class here, A, I'm sure my job will be printed because the class by which power will save the output is the class of this list task over here, which also match the class of the virtual printer and match the class of one of the real printer, so that's going to be uh, printed. All right. Of course, this position is equal to D. I don't want to keep the output. I want to print it. And uh, job separator equals zero because there is a separator for uh, given by a VM370. All right. And then after that, the end of job card. Good. Now, in between these three of these two over here, I have to give my job of creating the library. Okay, so let's do it. Input. First of all, we need the job card. Job. Deflib. Define a private library. Good. After that, we have to execute the core GZ program exec core gz and of course we have to give some input to that program so that's going to be uh, written right after the exec uh, command the exec uh, statement uh, new would you would think new lib but no it's not new lib it's new vol that's going to create a new library what kind of library well on the osvs there are Core image library, libraries, they contain phases or executable, if you wish. There are relocatable libraries and source libraries. That's the three kind of libraries. So I want to create a relocatable library because I want to store object modules that's going to be linked 
to a main program afterwards. So what kind of library? A relocatable library. Then what's the size of your library, RNA? Well, 10 cylinders. That's my personal choice. And of course, what's the size of the directory of the library? The, the, the small <coughs> uh, the space inside the library, which will store the list of the members of the library. Well, it's going to be five tracks, okay? So, <coughs> remember the first number, the size of the library is in cylinders and the size of the directory of the library is in tracks, okay? That's it. I don't want to do anything else. End of the job. That's good. All right, so this is not enough, of course, because I say, okay, you, Core GZ, create a library, but DOSVS needs to know what's the name of the library, the data set that's going to contain the, the library. It needs to know on which DASD and where on the DASD this library is going to be located. So we have to give this, this information. And uh, uh, differently from MVS, we do not give this information in a DD statement afterwards. We give it before with assignment and label. Remember, we need an assignment for the logical unit and a label for the, uh, the data set itself. So just here in between this uh, job and exec statement, I have to provide the information for the library, okay? So <clears throat> let's do this uh, input. The first thing I have to uh, say is what is the logical unit? Okay, so, oh, uh, not the logical unit. I have to assign the logical unit for the, the library. So what's the name of the logical unit for a relocatable library? It's, it is sysrlb, okay? And now I have to give the, the address of the DASD on which I'm gonna put the library itself, okay? So remember on the USVS, we have five DASDs. Uh, query DASDs. DASDs. We have uh, 360, 361, 362, 3 and 4. Now, the first one is the system residence. The other one is for power. We have one for VSAM and one for uh, optional libraries. I'm going to put the, the private library on the work uh, DASD, it's there for that. So let's choose the address 362. That's the address by which this DASD is known to DOSVS. So X362, that, that's good. And after that, I have to give the label. So I have to define the label. I use the DLBL statement. The first argument to DLBL is the DD name. That is the, the name, the, the symbolic name by which the library is known to this uh, core GZ program itself, you know, inside the program, if you wish. Now, this logical name or symbolic name is IJSysRL. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, Maybe I stop here for the moment and because you may ask yourself where the hell do you find this information? How should I know that? Well, there is a manual where this is explained. It's this one, uh, DOS System Management Guide. If you go <coughs> on page, I don't know, seven something, let me go to this. There is a section here called Creating Private Libraries. And you can see in this table over here, maybe not, but if you want to create a relocatable, the symbolic unique name or the logical unique name is sysrlb. The file name, what I call the DD name, is ijsysrl. So that's where I took this information. You, know. you just read this and you understand that you have assigned this logical unit and use this uh, DD name over here. Okay, so let me go put this back there. So, okay, so now we're going to define the label IJSysRL. 
So the first thing we have to, to give is the, the real name of the data set. So let's call it dosvs.private.rl. That's a personal choice. The next argument is the expiration date of the data set. On the USVS and on the MVS, I believe data sets come with an expiration date. So let's give it 99365, which is ter December 31 of 1999. And that's essentially plus infinity for the USVS because this is not a year 2000 compliant uh, system. And then I have to uh, give, well, the, tell what kind of data set this is. There are essentially three kinds of data sets on, on the OSVS. Sequential data sets, ISAM data sets, and uh, VSAM data sets. Maybe there are some other, but these are the three uh, I use personally. So this one, this library, is actually a sequential or a simple data set. So what you have to give here is SD. Okay, so that's the name of the library. Now I have to tell where it is located on this uh, 362-D here, okay? So I use uh, extent uh, statement. The first argument is the logical unit, sysrlb. The second argument is the volume ID of 362, so that's uh, work 01, work 01. After that, I have to give the kind of extent. Now, just before I have to tell the kind of data set, now I have to tell the kind of extent. Now, there are four kinds of extent. One, two, four, or eight. And the kind we want here is one. So if you look again in this uh, manual here, the system control statement uh, manual, this is where also the extent uh, statement is explained and you're going to learn that the kind of <laughs> the kind of extent we want is uh, the kind number one so that's fine let's do that no back here after that i have to give the sequence number of the extent that's because it's very possible that uh, a data set use many extents so it has a certain number of i don't know tracks at some place on the DASD, then another bunch of tracks at some other place and so on. So if there are many extents like that, we have to number them, sequence them, so that the system know the proper order in which this uh, data set is organized on the DASD. But this one, there will be only one extent, so I just give one as a sequence number. And then after that, there are two numbers which will tell the system where is located the library. So the first the first number is the, the, the relative tracks where it is located and the second number is the size of the, the data set itself. So I don't know yet where to put my data set. So let's uh, write three X's for the moment. But the size I know because I defined here a, a library of 10 cylinders. Now one cylinder on a 3350-D is 30 tracks, so if I have 10 cylinders, it's 300 tracks overall, so that's the size of my library, okay? So that's what I do, and that's it. So as soon as this three axes is properly defined here, I will be able to run this job that is gonna define my, my library, okay? So I have to find where to put my, uh, my library on this work 01, DASD here and for that I need to know where is the space uh, the room the the free uh, cylinders on the uh, the DASD okay so let me get out of this for the moment so I come here I guess okay file I have to check what's going on on this uh, DASD okay so that's why I'm gonna link this, DAS, this DASD and that's why I needed the MDisk statement. So I'm gonna link it. So link the USVS 362. And let's choose the same uh, the same address. You know? 
I don't need to write on it. Anyway, I can't write on it. So let's access with, uh, well, I can write on it if I, I use a VSAM data set, but I don't want to do that. I just want to look what's going on on this data set, or this DASD, sorry. So let's link it first. I'm told that uh, this is link read only and it's write, read write by the USVS. That's fine. I'm going to access this guy on file mode C. Now you see I have not a CMS mini disk, but a DOS DASD. And now I want to check what's the free space. So I just use the command list dataset C and then free as an option. Free space extends for C disk. I see that there is some free space on cylinder zero here. But starting on cylinder 16, there's this huge bunch of tracks over there, okay, available to store data sets. So that's, that's the place where we want to put our library. And it starts at cylinder 16 or relative track 480. So that's the number we want to put in our extent statement, okay? So let's do that. Let's clear, edit deflib dosvs and now I want to change the three x's by 480 oh sorry okay so that should be uh, enough and I should be uh, we should be able to run this job now and create the library okay so let's try to do that all right, I'll come here, clean this, and let's submit the job and see what happens. Hopefully it's gonna work. That seems good. <laughs> There's no error message on the console here. So now this is job 00183 over here. It's got, it got printed, as you can see here, right at the bottom. So let's cut the paper. To see what happens. So, e cut, uh, that's a personal command on Unix. Uh, zero, zero, one. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, pretty slow or fine, that's good. It should come soon. Oh, uh, you want to go open this. Oh, fine. Uh, this is for later. <coughs> All right, <clears throat> let's take a look. This is the job separator. Here's our job. This is the statement we gave. And we have this uh, private <coughs> relocatable on work 01 right there. Okay, starting at cylinder 16, you can see here ending over there, cylinder 25. All right, okay, so that's good. Let's put it there. I can see actually on my CMS virtual machine that the data set has been created. If I do list data set C, I see what's on the work uh, DASD. The page data set is stored on the work of zero on DASD and my DOSVS private relocatable library has been stored there too. So now I have, if I, I can even do better than that, I can do list data set to C extent like this. And I can see that my DOSVS private relocatable has size 300 uh, tracks and it starts at 480 like we uh, program okay so the library is there we're okay with that okay so now before we go on <coughs> let's take a look again to the the job deflib we have these uh, three uh, statements the assignment the label and the extent that gives the information to the program regarding the library now if i want to store uh, object modules in the library, or if I want to call modules from the library, I will have to give this information to the program. I will have to give this information 
to the uh, the compiler possibly the link editor everything so each time I want to use this library I will have to provide this information here okay so that it's not very difficult it's not a, a big problem but still we have to write these three uh, uh, statements here each time we want to use so maybe it could be uh, interesting if we could uh, ease our job a little bit by storing this information somewhere so this is possible so we can store the label here <clears throat> let's say in the BG uh, partition labels so that if we want to use the library later on we don't have to uh, to specify this quantity of these uh, these two statements but we will have to uh, specify the the logical unit because we cannot store the logical unit you know? so maybe uh, it could be a good thing to store this thing in a special place on the system residence disk you know it's the label cylinder I believe they call it so over there you have a bunch of labels which are useful for the system to work and we can store if we wish the label for our for this library so that we can use the library easily on the system okay that, that's uh, that's what we did you know for the the compilers we had to move the, the the labels of the work files so that uh, they are now located on this new DASD we created at the time you know? so that's the kind of thing we're gonna do over here alright so let me define a job that will store these uh, these labels so that my life was gonna be <laughs> easier afterwards okay so I will uh, create another job edit uh, I don't know a store label maybe something like that <coughs> the USVS now for a job like that I have to uh, again enter this uh, job card LST card and the job card for power I will always have to do that and that's a little bit annoying again so if you remember in one of Moshik's video he showed us how to write a macro in ISPF editor so that we can you know enter the job card easily using that macro and uh, what happens here is that if you use this old editor you know not the new one the, the, uh, the full screen editor of EE you know but you use the the old editor you can define macro for this one uh, a macro uh, macros <coughs> for the uh, for the editor so uh, where do you find information about that in this manual that jump uh, earlier you know this manual about the edit uh, program and if I take a look at page uh, which one let me check on my 90 there is a section that shows you how to create an exit macro you know, how it works and how you can do that so I created myself a small macro. I'm not going to explain here in this video, but I want to tell you that it's possible, you know, and it makes your life uh, quite uh, easier if you use edit. So I call my macro dollar dust and I give it uh, an argument, which is the name of the job, and it's going to create automatically this uh, power job entry control language I need. So let's call it STO label and watch this. So <clears throat> not only did he uh, created the, the three uh, the three lines, but he put myself you know at the right place for the input for the job. So that's a, a macro. Now I want to create a job STO label. Uh, it's gonna define LU and store label of private relocatable library okay so what do I have to do well maybe I'm gonna get my other job so I won't have to type again this uh, whole thing uh, okay one two three four five delete five up 
Okay. Uh, one, two, three. There we go. Three. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing is I want to assign this guy the most permanent way possible. I cannot assign it forever, but I can assign it for as long as the, the OSVS is running if I want. So the way to do this is to remove the two uh, slash at the beginning here. So let's remove those two slash. This way the sysrlb will be assigned as long as I don't change it or as long as the system is running. Of course, if I uh, shut down the system and I re-IPL the next day, I have to reassign this, uh, this logical unit. And you know, uh, if you look the beginning when we do the IPL of the OSVS, we run these, uh, <coughs> these jobs, you know, starting with the XX over here. And these jobs actually contain a lot of assignments like that so that all the logical units we need to, we need to use for a normal operation of the system are already assigned. So, so we need to do that at the beginning of the session. Then we're gonna we're gonna store the labels. And to store the labels or the label here, we need to use the option statement. So input option. Option is a multi-purpose uh, statement in the OSVS. It can be used to provide options to different programs, but it can also be used to store labels on the on the system. So I'm going to use option par std, which means I want to store this uh, label in the partition standard labels. Okay, so that's what I want to do. Then I give the label. Oh, sorry. Uh, then I give the label. And after that, let me uh, run a small program. LServe, that's a service program for the labels. It's going to list the labels that I have currently on my system. So this way I'm going to check that this label has been properly set up. You know, it's stored in there so that I can use it afterwards. Okay, and then, of course, end of job. All right, so that should be okay. So let's save this, maybe quit. So assign, option parts DD, I believe it's fine. Let's submit. That was a STO label. Good. Nothing wrong here. Let's cut the paper. Mm. He cut to zero, zero, one, four. Right. What happened here? USVS. L serve. Ah, dust label cylinder display. That's fine. It's located, as you can see, on the system residence volume. There is no user labels. Those are the temporary. But uh, you can see now my BG partition standard label. IJ SysRL, that's the, the USVS private layer relocatable with the location, everything is there. So it worked. There are no standard labels in the other partitions. And then after that, you have the one I have two over here. You can see that the account uh, file has a label. In F1, there is this. Uh, this is actually the file that contains the JCL to start power, you know, that's the label for that file. And then you have the standard labels with the, uh, the, the syslink file and everything, the, the work files over there, and so on. Okay, so it worked. Now my, <coughs> my library has a standard label stored on the disk set so that I don't have to specify this uh, this label each time I'm gonna use the library, so that's fine. All right, so if uh, you don't mind, <clears throat> I will stop right now this video and continue in a second video. That's because uh, in the past I'm <clears throat> I kind of 
do very long videos, so uh, one hour if not more. And uh, I thought that maybe I could chop this thing a little bit in pieces and make it slightly shorter. Apparently it's still relatively long, but slightly a shorter video so that uh, it's not going to be too long to go through all these steps. And you can watch the videos one after another. So let me stop over here and see you next time in a second video where I'm going to show you how to store the the modules in that library and then later on how to uh, compile link edit and run a Fortran program for this okay bye bye well thank you very much Rene uh, this has been very interesting I've been following uh, all your steps and this definitely works and uh, I can't wait for your second and third parts uh, of this series so uh, I'm going to make it short and just say thank you, Professor René Fernand in uh, Montreal, Canada, for this uh, new series, uh, most interesting. Thank you all for being faithful watchers of this uh, channel and especially for being faithful uh, viewers of René Fernand's uh, videos. If you like this particular video, do press on the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed to the Most Shakespeare Mainframe channel yet, I would urge you to do so now. Thank you very much and goodbye.